Good morning, students. We are discussing pavement design and highway construction. Today, our topic is interlocking concrete block pavement. So let's start the discussion with the first question that is what is interlocking concrete block pavements? So here is the first question what is ICBP that is the short form of interlocking concrete block pavement. Interlocking concrete block pavement is an environment friendly and labor intensive paving technology which is widely applied in many countries to solve the special purpose of paving problems. Concrete block pavement was introduced in the Netherlands as a replacement for the packed clay brick roads. Blocks were rectangular in shape and had more or less the same size as the brick. ICBP gives excellent performance when it applied at the location where the conventional system that is the regular system we learned in previous lectures that construction of flexible and a rigid pavement where such conventional system have lower service life due to some number of geological formations because of heavy traffic, environmental problems and operational constraints. Many number of such applications for light, medium and heavy traffic conditions are currently in practice around the world. And to overcome from all these problems, we sometimes used ICBP blocks. So let's continue the discussion with the advantage of ICBP blocks. So let's continue the discussion with the advantage of ICBP. The first is speed restriction. The concrete block pavements restrict the speed of the vehicle to about 60 km per hour, which is an prime advantage in city areas and intersections where possibility of accidents is high. The next advantage we have that is the skid resistant. This ICBP pavements are well skid resistant as it is having the rough surface. The third that is unaffected by oil. These pavements are unaffected by the spillage of oil from the vehicles and are ideal for the bus stops, bus depots and parking areas where sometimes we uh, face the spillage of oil problems. So we can overcome from that problems by using this ICBP. The fourth is it is grayish in color so that it gives more light reflecting efforts. Since the concrete blocks are gray in color, they reflect light better than the black bituminous pavements. So in the night, it gives better lookouts of the pavements so that it brings down the cost of street lights. The next advantage is it is preferred in heavily loaded areas. They are preferred in heavy loaded areas like container reports or the ports as they can have they can be very well designed to withstand the high stresses induced there. Also, we have earlier discussed that in uh, unaffected by oil, it is more preferable in the bus stops, bus depots. Okay, so it is more preferable in the heavily loaded areas. The next advantage it is it is very simple to construct. The construction of block pavements is very very simple and labor intensive and can be done using the simple compaction equipments. The next is simple and easy maintenance. Maintenance of such blocks is very simple and easy. So it is more preferable to use and the last is it is free from the cracking effect unlike the concrete pavements or the block pavements does not exhibit very deterioration effect due to the thermal expansion and the contraction so that this kind of 
payments, block payments are free from the cracking phenomenon. Okay, so these are the advantage and because of this advantages, many times we prefer to provide interlocking concrete block payments. As we all know that every coin has two sides. So as this ICBP have this much of advantages with that, it has some limitations. So let's discuss on the limitation of ICBP. The quality control of these blocks at the factory premises is prerequisite for durable concrete pavements. Any deviation of the base course profile will be reflected on the ICBP surface. Hence, extra care needs to be taken to fix the same. The high quality and the gradation of coarse bedding sand and the joint filling material are essential for the good performance. As we provide such blocks just on the sand bed and, and we have to fill the joints. So if that filling material is not proper or is in not good grade, it will not give the good performance. Okay. The ICBP over an unbound granular base course is susceptible to the adverse effect of poor drainage and it will deteriorate fast. ICBP is not suited for high speed roads. If you want to allow the traffic with the high speed at such cases you cannot provide this ICBP blocks. So generally we provide such blocks uh, in the racing area such as uh, bus stop bus parking, the regular parking areas or as we can say uh, for the parking area of heavy vehicles. In such conditions, we can provide ICBP blocks. Also in the footpaths or some street area, we can use this ICBP blocks where the speed limit is very low or in below 60 km per hour. In such cases, we can provide ICBP blocks. So let's talk on the procedure of interlocking concrete block pavements. Okay, the step one that is labeling and compaction of subgrade. The preparation of subgrade should be graded to a tolerance of plus or minus 20 millimeter of design level and its surface evenness should be have tolerance of 15 millimeter under a 3 meter straight edge. The moisture content in the subgrade material will directly affect the strength. Hence, the water table should not be at a level of 600 mm or higher or the below the subgrade level. Okay, so at no cost, this water table should be raised above the 600 mm. In case of soils like clay, silt, the moisture must be removed before the further rolling process. So as we all know that after preparing the subgrade, we have to do the compaction. So this moisture must be removed before further rollings. Okay. So after that, it is covered with a thin layer or the dense base course. As we all know that on the subgrade we provide base course or the subbase course. Yes, the layer is then rolled. The stabilization of subgrade with the lime or the mortar, lime or the cement may be also increase the strength of the subgrade. The subgrade should be compacted in the layers either 50, uh, either 150 millimeter or 100 millimeter in thickness as per our. IRC guidelines. So this is the first step of ICBP. The next is the installation of subsurface drainage works. The first thing that I must share that in ICBP construction, it is not also necessary to provide subsurface layer. Okay, if it is not necessary to provide this layer, and in such situation, the drainage works are provided 
at the base course okay so normally drains are sub subsurface drains and must be surrounded by either filter aggregates or the geotextiles to avoid the washing and bedding the washing of bedding and jointing sands except the pedestrian open areas the pavement surface should have the cross fall of at least three percentage and the top of the blocks next to the drainage channel should be at least of 10 millimeter above the lip of the channel so wherever you provide this drainage work your paver block should be at least 10 millimeter above that layer okay and generally we provide uh, more than 10 millimeter space but you are uh, the minimum space for what you are allowed is 10 millimeter okay in the pedestrian open area the before one was accepting the pedestrian areas okay in here we are talking about the pedestrian areas in the pedestrian open areas the pavement surface should have a cross fall of at least 1.25 percentage and the top of the block next to the drainage channel that should be 3 millimeter above the leap of the channel okay so this is the installation of subsurface drainage works the next step that is the provision of compaction of sub base and the base course the base course is directly laid over the subgrade with the thickness of each layer should not be more than 100 millimeter compacted thickness for the weaker subgrades there are other options we can improve we can provide improved drainage system we can also perform cement or the lime stabilization also we can use geotextiles okay so this three are the option with which we can improve the subgrade quality and which we uh, which we use in the base course or the sub base course whatever you are providing okay base course should be finished within 0 to 10 millimeter it should not pour water and should be well shaped the base course should be well shaped and it should not allow the water to pour into it do not rely on sand bedding for the removal of unevenness for the compaction usually vibratory plate compactors we use for the compaction purpose whenever you are performing compaction the number of passes for the effective combination uh, for the effective compaction will depend upon the various factors such as the compactor capacity the speed of the compactor base course material property and moisture contents and the layer thickness okay so by considering all these parameters all these factors we uh, select the number of passes the next step that is the installation of edge restraints the paper block must be produced with the high quality concrete that having at least 28 day characteristics compressive strength of 30 newton per millimeter square and the flexural strength of 3.8 newton per millimeter square the road curbs edge strips and pcc work can also be used as the edge restraint the gap the gap between two edge restraint block is required to be closed with the cement mortar so after installing the edge restraints the provision of compaction of the coarse bedding sand that we generally placed over the base course that compaction is to be provided thickness of bedding sand in the loose form must be 25 to 50 millimeter and in the compacted form it should be in between 20 to 40 millimeter the sand must be laid in the uniform thickness the grades and cambers must be provided in the subgrade and the base course the sand is required to be sprayed with the screed board and it must be it must have the uniform moisture content of 6 to 8 percentage hence the regular checking of moisture content of the sand is 
much more important because this all can be destroyed or this all might be destroyed with the heavy moisture containing the sand okay so before placing the sand take a trial to decide the surcharge for the typical sand the required quantity of sand for a day for a day work must be stored in advance and must be covered with the tarpaulin sheets so it cannot get the more moisturized after the compaction of this bedding sand the next step that is the laying of paper blocks this concrete block should be laid on 5 mm thick layer that is provided with bedding sand do not place the block on the saturated sand normally laying should be commenced from the edge strip and and proceed towards the center of the pavement also as far as possible laying should be done only and only from one direction along the entire width of the area that has to be paved while you are selecting the starting line few points that we need to be considered and that is on the sloping side we have to start from the lowest point and proceed to the upper direction or the upward slope in case of irregular shaped edge or the edge restraint it is better to start from the straight string lines whenever you are applying the blocks the gap between two blocks are not or should not be less than 2 mm and not more than 4 mm okay so after laying down the blocks the next step that has that is the application of joint filling sand and its compaction so for the filling the joints do not use wet block and wet sand this joint filling sand must be properly graded as per the guidelines for the compaction vibratory blade compactors are used with the heavy plate compactors and applying the centrifugal force on the surface we can give the proper compaction to the paper blocks that should not be delay in the compaction after laying of the paving blocks so after the completion of the compaction the pavement surface should be cleaned by the wire brush and after that fill all the empty space in between the paver blocks if it exist over there okay so after completing all this procedure your pavement is ready for the traffic so you can allow the traffic on that particular road but make sure that the traffic should not have the speed above the 60 km per hour this is the speed restraint in the icbp blocks this is the final surface of interlocking concrete block pavement i hope students you all understand the concept of icbp blocks how we can lay it how we can prepare the pavement surface or by using interlocking concrete block pavement thank you so much friends for your kind attention we'll see you in the next lecture